So today we're replacing one of these guys. This happens to be a throttle position sensor. They're not too hard to remove or replace. The, really the biggest or the toughest part is removing the screws. In this case, this hasn't been removed in 19 years. So I had to be super careful not to strip out the two Phillip type screws. And I'll show you what I mean uh, in a moment because I already recorded that portion. But nevertheless, you want to make super, you want to be super careful not to strip out these screws because you're working in an area a lot of times like with this much room with these newer vehicles. But nevertheless, I'll show you on how to remove this, reinstall it in the vehicle, also how to adjust the idle, and you may need to additionally reset something called an idle position memory. And if you don't have a sophisticated scan tool, you can still do that, and I'll show you on how it's done on this vehicle. So let's jump over to the car, and uh, let's get to it. Now the throttle position sensor is usually very close to the throttle body. So right here, this is where it's located on this vehicle. Let me come in for a close up and I'll show you the two screws in this case that needs to be removed to get this off the vehicle. Now in this case we have Phillip type screws holding on the throttle position sensor. Now these probably have not been removed in 19 years in this case. So what you want to do is get the largest screwdriver possible to fit over the end because even if you're a touch too small, you, you run a very, very high chance of stripping out that screw. Uh, another option you may come across are torque screws. Just make sure you use the right bit. Very important. And then you're going to have to muscle it because, again, you don't want to strip out these screws, especially where this is. It's so confined. If you strip one of these guys out, it's going to make your job a lot, lot harder. So just take your time, find the right screwdriver. And let's just go ahead and remove, in this case, two screws from the throttle position sensor. Now, before you do any electrical work on your vehicle, always disconnect the negative terminal to the battery. In this case, we have two harnesses. And again, this is a small, pudgy screwdriver, but I want to put as much muscle as possible into this screw. As you can see, the working room is very, very limited. Let's put a lot of muscle into it, and you got to turn it. And there you go. And then we have one on the opposite side here, which again is very, very limited to get to. You have to love the engineers when they do this. Okay, here we go. Put a lot of muscle into it, as much as you can, and then back it out. Okay, there it is. Okay, and there you go. Now when it comes time to installing your new sensor, right here is the mounting point. So in other words, on the rear of the sensor, you have this little notch. And as you can see, it moves. Oh, there you go. It moves like so. So if you take a look, if you match that up to this little mounting point, let me grab a screwdriver for you guys. Right here, whoop, right here, you can't really see, it's hard, but right here where the screwdriver is hitting is a mounting point, and that's the correct point to place this notch on. Now, how do I know that? If I take a look at the throttle here, if I just flip it, you'll see that it moves, in this case, clockwise. Okay, so you see it moving clockwise, and if you match up the sensor, this moves clockwise as well. There's a stop here. So in other words, once I let go, it stops. So this is the correct way to mount this new sensor. Now you don't want to over tighten these screws just yet because we'll need to move this sensor back and forth to find the sweet spot regarding the idle. And I'll show you really two ways on how you can do that. We'll go ahead and reconnect the harness connectors. And of course, go ahead and reconnect the negative terminal on the battery. Now before we tighten down these two screws on the sensor, we need to adjust it. In other words, if the vehicle is running right now, just by rotating this sensor, it would affect the idle speed. So there are two ways you can go about this. Number one is adjusting the sensor before we even start the car. 
And to do that, you need a multimeter. So I'll show you that first step right now. Now, taking a look at the harness connector, you have three wires going into this specific harness, and we need to access the middle wire. But I can't disconnect this sensor. I need it to keep it plugged in to get an accurate reading. So to bypass this little uh, grommet built into the harness connector, I'm using a paper clip, and just press down until it stops. And then you have a clear metal-to-metal -metal connection. Then I have the multimeter, the red lead, I want to touch to the paper clip. So I'm just using uh, alligator clips here to make a connection. Okay, and then your black wire goes to ground. That's any good metal point. So then we'll turn on the car. I'm not going to crank the car. Just turn the key to the on position. And then we should see a reading. Let me turn this on. We want volts DC for direct current. And we want to see a reading between 0.3 and 0.7 volts. So let's see what we have. So as you can see, we're at 0.5, let's say 0.6 right now, volts, which is fine. But let's say you were off. Just by rotating this sensor, let's see here, hold on, I made the screws a little too tight, but that's all right. Let me get both hands in here. There you go. See? So you could be too high. 0.9, we want, that's too much, 0.8. So that's like the sweet spot, right about here. So I'm going to leave it just like that, tying down the screws. And that's it. So this car is ready to go. Now the last step is, let's say you don't have a multimeter. Let's say you don't know which wire to touch. The last step is, forget this whole nonsense, you can just start the car, and with the car running, you can adjust the throttle position sensor. And you'll hear the idle go up and down. The only thing you'll really need to know is what the, uh, the base idle speed is. Now for this vehicle, it's 700 RPMs with an automatic transmission. But nevertheless, and I'll show you that technique in a second, let's just pretend that I don't have this, uh, the multimeter. But for anyone out there that has a Nissan or an Infiniti, send me a message. Chances are I can dig up how many volts, which wire to touch if you want to use the multimeter, or if you want to know what your uh, base idle speed is. Again, send me a message, and uh, if I can get it, I'll get it for you. So let me also show you the other way, just by not using this technique, just starting the car and adjusting it by moving the throttle position sensor. So I'm going to rotate this, and we'll see the change in the idle speed. So you see it just clicked up. A little too much, we'll bring it down. And it's a little too low. And as you adjust this, just check the RPMs. Once you find the right sweet spot, tighten down these two screws and you'll be in good shape. So as you can see, this is the perfect idle speed for this vehicle. As you can see, not a terrible job. Now the last step is you may need to reset something called the idle position memory. Now usually you need a sophisticated scan tool to do that. However, on this specific vehicle, if we turn on the ignition key, then turn off the ignition key, wait five seconds, and then do that process 20 times, then it resets that position memory. We don't need a scan tool or, or anything like that. So I'm going to do that right now just to wrap up this, uh, this swap for the throttle position sensor. But uh, that being said, thank you for watching. Hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea on what's involved when it comes to uh, removing the throttle position sensor, adjusting it. Again, if anyone out there has a Nissan or Infiniti, send me a message. I can usually dig up the specifics. Um, Usually. It all depends on the vehicle. Um, if you have something, cars in Europe and, and uh, Australia, I don't have that kind of stuff. But vehicles sold in the U.S. and Canada, usually I can dig it up for you. With that being said, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.